Sup guys, Roman here from Tech Guides, and welcome to my ultimate Battlefield 2042 settings guide. So over the course of the next few videos, I'll walk you through each and every setting in BF2042. I'm going to show you side by side comparison of what all of these settings actually are doing, unlike essentially any other YouTuber, and I will also give you my personal recommendation for each setting. So because BF2042 has a plethora of different settings, I had to split this video up in a few parts. So in today's first part, we're going to look at the general tab, the video tab, excluding all of the graphical settings, because this will be part of my FPS guide. And then finally, we'll also look at the sound tab. So instead, if you're more interested in the graphical settings, then check out my FPS guide for BF2042. And if you want to know some tips and tricks regarding uh, key binds and mouse binds, then make sure to check out part 2. So in fact, before jumping right into the game, let's change a few settings in the configuration file of BF2042. You can find this under Documents, Battlefield 2042, Settings, and here you'll find a profsafe underscore profile. By the way, if you want to reset all of your settings, then simply rename your file like I did here uh, into something underscore something um, and then restart the game for it to populate a new file. So for this video, I'm starting with a completely fresh profile file. All of the settings are at their default values. Quick note, before you change these settings, you'll want to make sure to launch the game at least once because otherwise these will be overwritten by their default values once again. So the first option that I would recommend to change is the Weapon DOF. I'm going to show a comparison on screen right now. On the left hand side you'll see Weapon DOF enabled, uh, which is the default. And on the right hand side you'll see Weapon DOF disabled. In my opinion, disabling this gives the game a much more clean look and potentially you'll also gain a few FPS by doing this. But unfortunately there's no in-game option corresponding to the Weapon DOF, which is a bit strange. But if you want to turn this off, then go into the option files and put a zero behind weapon DOF. Now, whilst we're in the settings file, what you can also do is to set a few more options to zero that might affect mouse acceleration or that have affected mouse acceleration in previous Battlefield titles. So that would be scheme zero sensitivity as well as scheme one and scheme two sensitivity. If you set these to zero, then potentially you'll get less mouse acceleration. For some of you, maybe this will help. For some of you, maybe it won't but it doesn't hurt to set these to zero from my experience. Save the file and launch Battlefield 2042. Now, when you first start the game, you're presented with this accessibility options. I advise you to just go to continue and launch into the game because some of these options are actually in different sub menus in the game. And I want everybody else to be able to follow this video who have already launched the game for the first time. Right, so let's hop into the options. The general tab, in my opinion, is mostly personal preference, so let's move on to display. So for the full screen mode, I'll have to test how much this affects performance. This will be part of my FPS guide. The full screen resolution, you'll want to match your monitor's resolution. And the refresh rate, obviously, you'll also want to match your monitor's refresh rate. Now, field of view, in fact, as all other Battlefield games, is set as the vertical field of view. So usually games um, specify this in the horizontal field of view, but I'll have a website linked in the description below where you can convert your horizontal and vertical field of views depending on the aspect ratio of your monitor. So most of you are going to have a uh, 16 to 9 aspect ratio, for example 1080p or 1440p display. And then you can simply dial in your preferred horizontal field of view, for example 90, which corresponds to a vertical field of view of 59. Another example would be 110, which is what I use in Warzone which corresponds to a vertical field of view of 78. So me personally, I do like this kind of 110 field of view. So I set the field of view to 78 uh, for both first person and third person view. Next, we have ADS field of view. And I'll show you a quick comparison on screen right now, um, how this affects the field of view when actually ADS'd. Uh, so as you can see, you have a bit more field of view when you enable this option. So it's kind of taking your actual field of view that you dialed in here um, and uses that to calculate the ADS field of view. So you'll get a bit more screen real estate. But of course, on the other hand, if you disable this, then everything is a bit more zoomed in when ADSing. So in the end, this really comes down to what you prefer. On the graphic settings, we have all of the annoying post-processing effects that I usually like to disable altogether. So we have motion blur, 
chromatic aberration, film grain, vignette and lens distortion. As I mentioned before, for the graphics presets I'll have to do a in-depth FPS guide in order to actually figure out how this individual settings here affect performance. Um, but for now I am just going to set these to basically all low, except for texture quality and texture filtering. Finally, under advanced, you want to set NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency to enabled and boost. Future frame rendering will introduce horrible input lag, so definitely disable that. And also disable vertical sync. For the final option, once again I'll have to test how much this affects performance in another video. Under HUD, you'll have the option to actually disable your HUD. This comes in handy if you want to create some thumbnails, for example for some YouTube videos. Pretty neat. But usually to play, you will probably want to have this enabled. Show hot prompts essentially just gives you a hint on which weapon is bound to which key. So you can see a comparison on screen right now. Uh, this is kind of personal preference. If you like these hints, then you can enable it. But if you like the cleaner look, then disable show hot prompts. Now I wasn't really able to figure out what control hints affect it. So if you know what this does, then definitely leave a comment down below. Reactive hints show up, for instance, when you need to reload. So this is one of the hints that I think you should probably leave enabled. HUD motion affects if your HUD is moving, for instance, when you have an explosive go off nearby. And because this can be quite jarring in this game, because there might be quite a lot of nade spam at some points, I like to disable this uh, for a slightly cleaner looking game. For camera shake amount, you can see a comparison on screen right now. On the left hand side is camera shake amount 100 and on the right hand side 50. Personally, I like to set this to the lowest number possible. The solder compass, you can have it always on, off or ADS only. Personally, I like to leave this always on. The fire mode indicator, you can also have when enable, always on or ADS only. Show vehicle seat does just what the name suggests and you probably want to leave this enabled. Next comes the color section and this is actually something where you can get quite crazy. So first of all you can actually set different colorblind options uh, which you can see previewed on the right hand side. However if you actually want to customize this then you can select basically any color in the RGB spectrum for the squad color, friendly color, enemy color and neutral color. Me personally I tweaked these colors a little bit because I didn't like the teal looking friendly and enemy color that the game ships with by default. So these are my RGB values for friendly and enemy soldiers. Finally there's an option to enable or disable the kill lock which unfortunately somehow doesn't work so even if you have this to off you'll still see the kill lock. But here's a bit of a tip that I saw from study is that you can actually enable this and set this to nearby. So if for instance you're on a flank and some of your teammates are instantly getting killed, you can use this setting to get an early notification. Moving over to crosshair, you can change your crosshair opacity. So if for some reason you don't like to see your crosshair, you can just disable it. Strange option in my opinion. Crosshair projection, you most likely want to turn off. However, I really wasn't able to get a visual difference when aim enabling or disabling this option either while jumping or standing close to geometry. So maybe this setting is currently bugged. Here's a comparison between different color thicknesses. And finally you can also select a specific color for your crosshair. Now personally I like to have a sort of Counter-Strike-esque crosshair color, so something quite green uh, to be honest is what I like. Maybe something like that. Very nice. The hit indicator opacity you probably want to keep at 100%. Hit color, you can adjust the color of your hit markers. Damage base shape is essentially important for headshots, so if you do hit headshots you get like a double hit marker. I find that kind of jarring to be honest, um, so I'll leave this disabled. However, I set up a headshot color, so that way I can distinguish if I actually landed a headshot. So let me set this to something like red and then for the kill color I set it to green and finally I leave the armor broken hit indicator enabled and I'll also tweak this color here a little bit to make it a little bit more apparent. So this is how that then looks in practice. Headshot, headshot and for some reason I can't kill this guy. <laughs> Lovely. 
Finally, the damage indicator is when somebody is shooting at you, you get the direction of where you're being damaged from and you can change the size of this indicator as well as its color. Moving on to minimap, here's a comparison between having the minimap background opacity around 80%, which is what I prefer to have it at, and zero. The rotate with you option you probably want to leave enabled unless you're a hardcore PUBG player. God, I always hated that minimap. The minimap view distance is definitely set too low for on foot. So on screen I'm showing you a comparison between how this looks with the view distance set to 50, 70, 80 and finally 100. Sadly there is no option in the game to toggle between different zoom distances of your minimap as it was possible with previous Battlefield titles, but maybe this is a feature that will come in the future. For now I just like to have this at 80. Moving on to sound and into the audio tab, here's where you can define your audio mix. Now if you like to play the game a bit more competitively, then you most likely want to disable the music as well as the in-game announcer. Personally I don't mind a bit of music, so I set this to about 60. Note that you won't hear if you lose any of your sectors if you turn the in-game announcer to zero, however because the in-game announcer really pops up every few seconds I like to disable this to kind of clear out the audio track from all of this clutter. The sound configuration you obviously want to set to stereo and here's a quick comparison between the different audio mixes. Next there is the option to play the audio in the background, so this is when the game is actually not in focus and I personally really like to have this option enabled so that when I'm alt tapped I know when the game is about to start. Hit indicator unfortunately you only have the option between off which is horrible and bf2042 which is just slightly better. Finally this option allows you to disable the in world radios that are scattered around some of the objectives in bf2042. subtitles you can enable or disable and change their size. And that about wraps it up for this first part of my ultimate Battlefield 2042 settings guide. So if you did enjoy this video then definitely make sure to smash that like button, it took me a long time to put together all of these different examples so I would really appreciate that. And make sure to stick around so you won't miss part 2 where I'm going to talk about the rest of the in-game settings and some uh, recommendations in terms of setting up your mouse and keyboard binds. And then finally I'll do a full FPS guide for BF2042 walking through each graphical option in-game and running benchmarks to provide you with performance impact metrics for each individual setting. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.